Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. All right, there's no specific topic for today, but we're going to look at an interesting problem. How fast can a particle travel along a helical path if we just let it loose? If we assume that this goes down forever, then this will keep accelerating, and that's not quite what I'm interested in. So we're assuming that we have some amount of friction that's slowing this down, and that's going to counteract the force of gravity pulling it forward. We have three parameters that we're interested in. The first is mu, which is the coefficient of friction. The second is the grade of the slope, which I'm going to call alpha. The third is the radius of curvature, which I'm going to call rho. Using these three, we should be able to find some maximum velocity for our particle. Now, this is just a box sliding down a hill problem with an additional twist. So the traditional box sliding down the hill has three forces acting on it. It has the force from the weight, which I'm going to write as mg, the normal force, and finally, the force from friction. The interesting thing about this problem is that it's more than just the 2D box down a hill. We also have a third dimension, which has this circular path. So looking from above, our velocity is along the tangent direction. Our acceleration points towards the middle of our circle, and it's in the UN, the normal direction. If we were to draw the unit vectors on the side view, we would have ut in the direction of velocity. So again, this is our unit vector in the tangent direction. And then we need an additional vector, which will be normal to both the tangent vector and the normal vector. And we call that the binormal vector. And that's going to be in this third direction. Okay, now's a great time to look back at the equations of motion. Since we're interested in the sum of the forces, we're interested in the acceleration vector. The first thing you'll notice is that there's no binormal term here. There can't be any acceleration in the binormal direction, since by definition, any acceleration for the curvature occurs in the normal direction. So the equation that we're going to solve is sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. First thing we'll do is just write out all of the forces. So we have gravity, we have friction, and finally the normal force. And these will be equal to mass times our acceleration vector. The first thing we're going to do is get rid of the v dot term. One of our assumptions is that we're approaching a steady state velocity, which means that this v dot term is going to go to zero. The next step is splitting up these vectors into their components. The easiest is the friction term, because we know that goes in the opposite direction as velocity. So this is going to be in the negative ut direction. I'll write this as negative f sub f without a vector sign, and say that it's in the ut direction. Next, we can split up gravity fairly easily. And we do that by recognizing that this right here is alpha. So we have a mg cosine alpha term in the binormal direction. As alpha goes to zero, the binormal is directly in opposite of mg. We know that because cosine of zero is equal to one. The other component of our gravity term is going to be in the tangent direction. And since we already used cosine, that has to be sine. Okay, now let's split up our normal term. By definition, the normal force can never be in the direction of velocity. And so we can omit the ut component because there's no ut component. But we do need some normal and binormal components of the normal force. I'm going to write this as n sub n, meaning the normal components of the normal force. That's in the un direction. And n sub b which is the binormal component of the normal force. 
Now, all of this is just writing out our sum of the forces. This is equal to ma, which will be m v squared over rho times u sub n. Using this, we can write three equations. The first is going to be in the tangent direction, and we're just going to add up all of the forces in the tangent direction. So we can say that mg sine of alpha is equal to f sub f. These are two terms in the tangent direction, and there's nothing on the right-hand side. So this is all there is. In the normal direction, we again have two terms. We have the normal component of the normal vector here, and we have our acceleration on the right-hand side. That means this equation can be written as n sub n is equal to m v squared over rho. Finally, in the binormal direction, we have this gravity component and this normal component. There's nothing on the right-hand side, so these two have to equal zero. So we can write this as nb is equal to mg cosine alpha. All right, the final equation that will tie all these together is the fact that our friction force is proportional to the magnitude of our normal force. So let's say that in math. The force of friction is equal to mu times the magnitude of n. And we can write this magnitude using Pythagoras. So that'll be mu times the square root of the two components squared. So finally, we can write a single equation with all of this together. And that will be mg sine of alpha is equal to mu times the square root b to the fourth over rho squared plus m squared g squared cosine squared of alpha. Last thing I want to do is take out the mass because it can cancel on both sides of the equation. And so we end up with g squared sine squared alpha is equal to mu squared times v to the fourth rho to the second plus g squared cosine squared alpha. And once we have some values to plug in here, this equation can be solved pretty quickly for our final velocity.